You are probably no stranger to Robert Redford, aren't you? That golden boy of Hollywood, widely recognized and adored, his cinematic presence spanning decades. Redford has graced our screens with undeniable charisma. But have you ever thought about the man behind those mesmerizing roles and sparkling blue eyes? There's much more to Redford than just his Oscar-worthy performances. Dive deeper, and you'll discover stories of youthful rebellion, profound heartbreaks, and ventures that forever changed independent cinema. Ready for a journey through the life of one of America's most beloved stars? Let's get started. Charles Robert, Redford Jr. On a warm summer day, August 18, 1936, Martha Hart and Charles Robert Redford welcomed their son into the world, naming him Charles Robert Redford Jr. Their joy knew no bounds as they celebrated the arrival of their beautiful baby boy, completely unaware that he would one day become one of the most popular and handsome male stars in America. As many would agree, talent needs a nurturing environment to blossom, and Redford's roots were deeply embedded in the love and teachings of his family members. Martha, his stay-at-home mom, stood as a beacon of kindness and affection in his life. The connection between young Charles and his mother was special, a bond not only formed from maternal love, but also from shared adventures and little secrets. Picture a ten-year-old Robert learning to drive a car, guided fearlessly by his mom. It's not the typical mother-son bonding activity, but these small tales paint a vivid picture of their relationship. On the other side of the spectrum, while the bond with his mother was strong and direct, Robert's relationship with his father, Charles Sr., had nuances and complexities. They didn't always see eye to eye, and disagreements were woven into their dynamic. Yet, as is common in many parent-child relationships, these moments of discord were interspersed with love and mutual respect. In such instances, young Robert sought solace in the company of other male role models in his family. His grandfather, Uncle David, and his maternal grandpa became guiding figures in Robert's journey. Each imparted a unique lesson, from survival skills in the wild to cherishing nature and engaging in sports. They contributed to shaping the multifaceted persona of Robert Redford. Their influence wasn't about molding him into their image, but about gifting him diverse experiences and viewpoints. These interactions sowed the seeds for Redford's enduring love for nature and the great outdoors, passions that would play a profound role in his life. However, Redford's childhood wasn't always filled with joy. Like every individual, Regardless of their later achievements, he faced trials that played a crucial role in shaping his character. Early on, these challenges presented themselves. In his teenage years, tragedy struck young Charles when he lost two pillars of his life. The passing of Uncle David was a grievous blow, and the pain deepened with the loss of his much-loved mother to a rare blood disease. The family, typically reserved about losses and grief, found it challenging to openly express their pain, complicating the healing process. It was during these periods of personal turmoil that the foundational layers of Robert's character were solidified. As any seasoned actor would attest, the realms of pain and happiness are two sides of the same coin, especially in the world of acting. Perhaps these early life experiences, combined with the nurturing from his family, later translated into the depth and range that Redford showcased in his iconic roles. Close bond with his mother. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, they say, and in Robert Redford's case, that sentiment rings true. His relationship with his mother was not just a familial bond, it was a unique connection that played a pivotal role in shaping the man he became. Navigating the challenges of adolescence and young adulthood can be daunting, but Redford was fortunate to share a very special and close bond with his mother. In an interview with NPR's Fresh Air in 2018, Redford reflected on the close relationship, sharing anecdotes that painted a picture of a life filled with adventure and unique experiences. Life, happiness, and loving her. She had gone out, I mean, she took risks and was very dangerous, and when I was ten, she taught me how to drive a car. But no one knew about it. I mean, 
things like that, so we were close, Redford reminisced. The mother-son duo engaged in activities that went beyond conventional parent-child interactions, creating a bond based on shared experiences and a sense of adventure. These moments of unconventional bonding contributed not only to their closeness, but also to Redford's vibrant and lively personality. The lessons learned from his mother, the joy of living in the moment, and the thrill of embracing life's adventures became integral parts of Redford's character. Losing Family Members Redford's journey through the labyrinth of life was marked by another disheartening loss, casting shadows over his teenage years. The departure of Uncle David was a grievous blow, leaving an indelible mark on Redford's heart. However, the tapestry of the tragedy was not woven with a single thread. Around the same time, other family members had also bid farewell. At the tender age of 18, Redford faced an additional blow, the loss of his much-loved mother, to a rare blood disease. Losing two pivotal figures in his life during the formative years of adolescence was undoubtedly a heavy burden to bear. The impact of such losses juxtaposed with the family's approach of not openly discussing their pain created a complex emotional landscape for Redford. In the crucible of grief, the young Redford began to forge the foundational layers of his character. The complex interplay of sorrow, unspoken emotions, and the family's resilient spirit became instrumental in shaping the man who would later grace the silver screen with depth and authenticity. College life. Redford's journey through college was anything but conventional. He was, in essence, a rebel with a cause. While Redford is undoubtedly a well-rounded individual, his college years were marked by a distinct lack of interest in traditional academic pursuits. His disdain for schoolwork was a well-known facet of his rebellious spirit. During an interview with Terry Gross on NPR's Fresh Air, Redford candidly shared insights into his college days, shedding light on a period of his life where academic pursuits took a back seat. When Gross probed about Redford's college experience, asking, You went to university. I've heard studies weren't really your thing and you spent a lot of time drinking and riding motorbikes or competing in drag races. Redford's response provided a glimpse into the lively and unconventional nature of those years. Yes, yeah, the whole thing, Redford affirmed, acknowledging his penchant for mischief and the unconventional activities that filled his college days. While he might not have been the studious type, Redford embraced a different kind of education, one that involved motorbikes, drag races, and a fair share of revelry. Cupid's Arrow Redford's college days were a kaleidoscope of exuberance and mischief, resulting in his departure from the University of Colorado. The academic environment failed to captivate him, and his unconventional approach to college life ultimately led to a parting of ways. However, before the winds of change could reshape his destiny, the whims of love intervened. In the midst of navigating the complexities of college existence, Cupid's arrow found its mark, and Redford found himself entangled in the enchanting allure of love. A fellow classmate named Lola Van Wagenen became the focal point of his affection, sparking a romance that transcended the confines of academia. Yet, as fate would have it, the journey towards their shared future necessitated a pause, a moment for Redford to address the contours of his own life before embarking on the path they envisioned together. Following his artistic sojourn in Paris, France, and Florence, Italy, where Redford immersed himself in the world of art, he returned to the United States with a renewed sense of purpose and fresh aspirations. Amid the vibrant backdrop of his evolving goals, one stood out prominently, to solidify his commitment to the love of his life, Lola Van Wagenen. Despite the physical distance and the passage of time, Redford's love for Lola remained resilient. Fueling his determination, he embarked on a journey that would symbolize the depth of their connection. On bended knee, against a backdrop of shared dreams, Redford proposed to Lola, a pivotal moment that would alter the course of their lives. Lola, undoubtedly enamored, reciprocated with a resounding yes. Their love, now reaching a crescendo, 
prompted a significant decision, Lola chose to forgo her education. At the tender age of 21, in the clandestine embrace of Las Vegas, Nevada, the young lovers exchanged vows, sealing their commitment to a shared life. Focus on family. In the tapestry of Redford's life, interwoven with the threads of triumph and achievement, the narrative also bore the weight of challenges and unforeseen tragedies. While the 1960s marked Redford's relentless pursuit of a challenging and rewarding career path, the family remained at the core of his priorities. Navigating the delicate balance between career aspirations and familial responsibilities, Redford and Lola welcomed the arrival of four beautiful children. However, the joy of parenthood was shadowed by an unforeseeable tragedy that unfolded with the birth of their first child. In 1959, the couple joyously welcomed their first child into the world. However, after only two and a half months, their world was shattered as their son, Scott Anthony Redford, was diagnosed with sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS. The loss of a child is a grief that transcends words, and Redford, who had grown up in a household where discussions of death and loss were muted, found himself navigating the profound pain in the confines of a private struggle. Scott Anthony's life, though brief and largely shielded from the public eye, left an indelible mark on the Redford family. As Redford rose to fame in Hollywood, the scars of this personal tragedy remained hidden beneath the gloss of stardom. His inclination towards privacy regarding his family life became a conscious choice, a protective shield against the invasive nature of public scrutiny. In an interview with CBS Sunday Morning, Redford reflected on the cost of fame, expressing how, at a certain point, it began to take more away than it gave. The demands of celebrity meant spending less time on the work he loved most, a sacrifice that fueled his desire to safeguard the sanctity of his private world. Family matters. Family became a cornerstone of Robert Redford's life. And despite the profound tragedy of losing their first child, Robert and Lola Van Wagenen demonstrated remarkable resilience, going on to build a family that would become an integral part of Redford's life journey. In the wake of their heartbreaking loss, the couple welcomed their daughter Shauna into the world in 1960. As she grew, Shauna discovered her passion for painting, contributing to the diverse artistic talents within the Redford family. The arrival of their son James in 1962 marked another joyous chapter in their lives. James, who grew up to become a writer and director, added a creative dimension to the family's array of talents. In 1970, the family expanded once more with the birth of their daughter, Amy. Following in her father's footsteps, Amy pursued a career in acting, gracing popular shows like Sex and the City, Law and Order, Criminal Intent, and The Sopranos as a guest star. Amy's versatility extended beyond acting, as she also delved into directing and filmmaking. As the years unfolded, the Redford family continued to grow. And today, Robert Redford finds himself surrounded by the laughter and energy of seven grandchildren. Robert's journey through college and his early years with Lola unfolded as a rich tapestry, woven with highs and lows. From the tumultuous escapades at the University of Colorado, to the blossoming of love with Lola and the poignant heartbreak of losing Scott. This period was marked by transformative experiences that not only shaped Robert as an individual, but also strengthened the bond between him and Lola. Their relationship served as a guiding light, illustrating that true love encompasses not only the celebration of joys, but also mutual support during profound sorrows. The narrative of Robert Redford extends beyond the realm of cinematic brilliance and accolades. It is the story of a young man, once a college rebel, who navigated life's complexities with passion, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to those he held dear. Through experiences both euphoric and heart-wrenching, he provided a master class in embracing life in all its hues, leaning on love during challenging times, and crafting a legacy grounded in authenticity and heartfelt connections. Embarking on a new adventure, 
rising to newfound fame. In the following decade, Redford entered an entirely different realm of exploration. He initiated a family and welcomed three beautiful children. Alongside his personal life, a plethora of fresh career opportunities unfolded. His handsome appearance and the charm of an approachable all-American neighbor propelled him into the industry, unlocking various doors of opportunity. It was in 1969, with a prominent role in the film Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, alongside his close friend Paul Newman, that he ascended to the next echelon, marking a transformative moment in his career. The triumph of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid went beyond mere success. It turned into a cultural phenomenon. Redford's portrayal of the Sundance Kid, characterized by charm, sharpshooting prowess, and effortless coolness, captivated audiences worldwide. With this film, Robert Redford transcended being just an actor. He became a superstar. However, the magnetic appeal of Robert Redford extended beyond his on-screen charisma. Behind the camera, he was establishing himself as a discerning actor with a keen eye for compelling stories. His choices in roles demonstrated a delicate balance between commercial appeal and depth. From The Sting, another collaboration with Newman and director George Roy Hill, which delved into the world of con artists, to All the President's Men, where he portrayed journalist Bob Woodward unraveling the Watergate scandal, Redford showcased his versatility and dedication to meaningful cinema. As his fame skyrocketed, so did his influence. Redford's star power was such that he could draw attention to lesser-known yet equally significant narratives. His involvement in projects served as a mark of quality, assuring audiences that the story was worth their time, and time after time, he delivered. Despite his mounting professional achievements, Redford remained rooted in his origins. The glitz and glamour of Hollywood did not seduce him. Instead, he aimed to leverage its influence for positive change. In 1985, the sad news of Redford and Lola parting ways emerged. However, before this chapter closed, the couple had invested in a substantial piece of land in Utah, a landscape adorned with mountains and untamed wilderness. Their foray into land ownership began in 1969, the year Redford first tasted success with the purchase of ski land. Initially investing a modest sum of 500, the expanding popularity of Redford translated into a growth in the expanse of their property. Ultimately, this acquired land served as the canvas for realizing a new cinematic dream. Redford transformed the property into the Sundance Institute and laid the foundation for the renowned Sundance Film Festival, a platform dedicated to independent directors. The evolution from a personal investment to a cultural institution marked a remarkable journey, showcasing Redford's commitment to fostering the world of independent filmmaking. It all started with a dream. In the early 1980s, as Redford's star illuminated Hollywood's sky, he gazed beyond the realm of commercial blockbusters and envisioned a terrain where countless untold stories lay concealed. These narratives didn't necessarily conform to mainstream preferences, but held equal allure, significanza, and authenticity. Recognizing the absence of platforms for these voices, Redford took the initiative to create a space. The Sundanza Institute was more than just a physical venue, it embodied a vision. Redford conceived it as a sanctuary for artists, a place where they could refine their skills, explore without the constraints of commercial demands, and collaborate with kindred spirits. It stood as a hub of learning, evolution, and, above all, uninhibited creativity. Various workshops, mentorship programs, and labs spanning disciplines such as directing, screenwriting, and producing were set in motion. The objective was clear, to foster talent and empower individuals to bring their distinctive stories to the forefront. However, Redford recognized that creation was only a part of the equation. For these stories to truly resonate, they needed an audience. And so, the Sundance Film Festival was conceived. 
Commencing in 1985 as a humble event with the aim of showcasing independent films, it swiftly evolved into one of the most influential film festivals globally. Each year, the quiet town of Park City, Utah, burst into life as filmmakers, actors, producers, and cinephiles from around the world gathered to celebrate cinema in its purest form. The Sundance Film Festival left an indelible mark on independent cinema. It served as a launching pad for filmmakers who would later become industry stalwarts. Directors such as Quentin Tarantino, Steven Soderbergh, and Darren Aronofsky, among others, owe their initial recognition to the festival. Films that might have faded into obscurity found their audience at Sundance, earned acclaim, and often secured distribution deals. The festival transcended being merely an event. It became an institution, a badge of honor, a validation that every filmmaker aspired to. Yet amidst all the evolution, the core ethos remained unchanged. At its core, Sundance was and continues to be a testament to Robert Redford's unwavering belief in the transformative power of stories. Celebrity crushes, more than on-screen chemistry. Despite collaborating on just four films together, it turns out that Robert Redford and Jane Fonda share a close bond that goes beyond the movie sets. Their connection seems to extend into the realm of genuine admiration and friendship, evident even when the cameras aren't rolling. According to Redford, there was just a chemistry between us as people that we were able to bring to the screen without trying. It's always been like that in all of our movies as he shared with The Telegraph in 2017. From their early collaborations, it became apparent that Redford and Fonda shared an extraordinary connection. Their initial film, The Chase, released in 1966, hinted at the spark that would define their subsequent projects. They weren't merely actors were sitting in lines. They were souls connecting, bringing their characters to life with such authenticity that viewers couldn't help but become immersed in their shared world. However, it was Barefoot in the Park, a year later, that truly cemented their status as one of Hollywood's iconic couples. Portraying Paul and Corey Bratter, a newlywed couple navigating the highs and lows of early marriage in a cramped New York apartment, Redford and Fonda illuminated the screen. Their performance was charming, genuine, and often hilariously touching, providing a window into the playfulness and challenges of young love. The movie went beyond being a comedic romp. It served as a testament to how two actors in perfect harmony could elevate a simple story to cinematic magic. Their professional and personal journey came full circle with Our Souls at Night, released in 2017, portraying two widowed neighbors seeking connection in the autumn of their lives. The enchantment of their dynamic extended beyond the roles they portrayed. It manifested in the subtle glances they exchanged, the spontaneous laughter during interviews, and the shared memories of a journey spanning decades. Whenever a love scene appeared on the screen, we'd playfully tease, saying, Oh, come on, tell her you love her, poking fun at the scene. So, what was Fonda's perspective on this unique relationship? She candidly admitted, I was always in love with Robert Redford. We worked together on three movies, but nothing happened because we were both married. This revelation adds a layer of complexity to their dynamic, showcasing a profound connection that transcended the professional realm. The unspoken feelings and mutual respect during their collaborations hint at a relationship that goes beyond the screen a testament to the genuine bond shared by these two Hollywood icons. Beyond the silver screen, their connection sheds light on the intricacies of personal relationships in the spotlight. Even when constrained by the commitments of marriage, the palpable connection between Redford and Fonda suggests a friendship and camaraderie that weathered the challenges of their personal lives. In love again. Life's journey often unfolds its most beautiful surprises in the later chapters, offering opportunities for renewal and rediscovery. Robert Redford, despite the glitter and glamour of Hollywood, experienced the poignant twists life can take, 
After the challenges of his earlier years, Redford discovered solace and rejuvenation in the company of Sybil Danning, a relationship that would prove transformative for both. Their introduction was serendipitous, a chance encounter blossoming into a lasting connection. The chemistry between Redford and Sybil was immediate. Sybil, with her European elegance, sharp intellect, and inherent warmth, provided a refreshing contrast to the bustling and often superficial world of Hollywood. Redford was captivated not just by her beauty, but by the depth and authenticity she radiated. Here was a woman with a wealth of experiences, stories, and a vibrant approach to life. Their serendipitous meeting in 1996 blossomed into a profound connection, leading them down the aisle in a beautiful wedding ceremony in 2008. With Sybil, Redford embarked on the golden years of his life with renewed enthusiasm. They explored the world extensively, uncovering hidden gems and indulging in their shared passions for nature, art, and culture. Sybil introduced Redford to perspectives he hadn't previously considered, from the intricacies of European cinema to the realms of art and literature she held dear. The influence of their travels and shared adventures could be observed in the projects he undertook and the depth he brought to his roles. Beyond that, Sybil offered Redford a sanctuary away from the relentless scrutiny of the limelight. She became his confidant, partner, and muse, adding a new and fulfilling chapter to the tapestry of his life. Their home wasn't just a physical space. It was a sanctuary brimming with art, books, and reflections of their shared journey a place where Robert Redford could strip away any facade and simply be himself. Within those walls, there existed an authentic and heartfelt connection between two souls who had serendipitously found each other at the right juncture in time. The years they spent together were characterized by mutual growth, as Sybil, with her artistic sensibilities, discovered in Redford a mentor and guide in the realm of cinema. Their conversations about film, art, and the nuances of storytelling served as wellsprings of inspiration for both. In return, Redford, whose horizons had primarily been shaped by the world of Hollywood, ventured into uncharted territories under Sybil's influence. Whether delving into European literature, exploring modern art, or relishing evenings immersed in classical symphonies, Sybil expanded Redford's worldview in ways he hadn't anticipated. Their love story, characterized by mutual respect, shared passions, and profound love, added a poignant chapter to Redford's illustrious life narrative. It stood as a testament to the idea that life, despite its trials and heartbreaks, holds the promise of joy and rediscovery. In Sybil, Robert Redford discovered more than a life partner. He found a kindred spirit and a second chance at love. Together, they embraced the golden years with a deep understanding and appreciation for each other. Opening up about his marriage, Redford shared in a 2011 interview with People magazine that Sybil played a significant role in keeping him youthful and active. My wife is a very special person. She's younger than me and European, which I like. So that's a whole new life, he remarked. Redford expressed his zest for life, indulging in activities like horse riding, skiing, and playing intense games of tennis. He attributed his vitality to the energy he found in his relationship with Sybil, stating, I have energy. When that stops working, I might start to think about getting old. Their union was a testament to the rejuvenating power of love and companionship, ushering in a new chapter in Redford's life, Retirement. As Redford gracefully embraced retirement from active film roles, he reflected on the concept itself. For him, the idea of retirement suggested an end or a surrender, a notion he didn't readily align with. One of his final cinematic ventures was the movie Our Souls at Night, marking a poignant moment in his extensive career. In a candid revelation, Redford expressed his intention to step back from acting in 2018. However, he acknowledged that the film industry would forever hold a special place in his heart. He challenged the conventional notion of retirement, questioning its connotations. Retirement means ending or giving up something to me, so I don't really think about it. 
I mean, you have to live your life. Why not make the most of it as long as you can?